Bill, I don't guess they killed y'all. I, I, you know, that you are able to sit here today as I am. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't rub off on you or, or ruin your situation. Annual testing, look at it. Now, they're saying that they will take the pass or the equivalent. Now, there's a, an equivalency test that's a nationally norm reference test that's recognized by the, by the, by the, by the nation, of course, the, the norm test, and that uh, I can't remember what the name of those tests were back in the day that, that we took, standardized tests, basically, that we took. And look at the annual testing we require. Look at what we require of our, of our, of our public schools, and look at the difference. Benchmarking, diagnostic testing, teacher requirements. So look, at, look at the teacher. Only a, only a bachelor's degree or higher. Minimum of 12 weeks of student teaching. Minimum of 100 hours of clinical experience. Now we're trying to get five years of the, you know, they've got a bill on the calendar right now to get five years of preparation before they can get a co continuing contract. I mean, we just continue over and over and over to destroy, to destroy and to, 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 to diminish public schools all over the fact that we can't fund them. We created the Education Oversight Committee, in my opinion, we created the Education Oversight Committee to, because of the fact that we were going to uh, make us look, you know, the facts are facts. We've struggled. There's no question. It's a struggle, not only here, but all in the South. If you look at the lower tier of, of states, when you look at all the scores that you guys want to talk about, the SAT, which is nothing but a college entrance exam, but you look at the you look at all the scores and everything, and the southern tier of this United States has has struggled, okay. But I, but we have mandated so many things down their throat that we we put. Look at it. Look at the tuition tax credit uh, versus the uh, passage of this test. Look at look at it continues on on the second page. Look at the next thing. For professional requirements, none for them. And look at all we have to have. Annual school performance requirements. Look, look at what's, what's going on in the public schools. I'm just saying, there's, you cannot compare, and I won't go through every one of them because I was, if you're going to let me talk all day, but I, I, I was, you cannot compare apples to apples. It's not, an, it's not an apples to apples comparison. Now, I wanted to go one thing before I, and I won't, I, now that I know where we are and what's going on and I will cool down a little bit, I'll be fine, but uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask these questions and hope I get these 10 questions answered before the 10 minutes is up. The Board of Economic Advisors describes the fiscal impact of this substantial. Uh, and, and this fiscally responsible to all Republican crowd except for Mike Anthony sitting here. Uh, over the next 13 years proposes, the BEA says, that this could, because of the $130 million impact <laughs> after the first year, and then it begins at $130 million. Now, where are we going to get, where are we going to get this? I mean, this could bankrupt the state. We, this literally could bankrupt this state because it's going to be up to two billion dollars in, in, in the state coffers by, night, by, by uh, 13 years from now. Now, none of us may be here, but look at what we're going to be handing down to them. The savings claim may never pass the, the fact test, the real world of school funding. Here's the deal. If you take one child out of a, out of a classroom, you still got to have that classroom. You still got to have heat. You still got to have, you can take one or two children out of, one, out of a classroom and boom, it doesn't change anything as far as the real life school that you have to have. So it's very important you know that. The bill will grow state government. Boy, that's something I know some of you, uh, uh, Mr. Semmel, you just hate growing state government. And I know that you don't like the fact it's going to add to the Education Oversight Committee, which you guys have tried to get rid of. And I know you don't like the Budget Control Board, and I know all these things that we're looking at, this is going to happen. We're going to grow people. We've got to have some more people there to, to, to give out the facts because you're going to require them, as you do because of our public schools, to make sure they're accountable to where you can hand it down to them, turn around, and then make sure you evaluate them. I don't have a problem with that. No limit on family income. Uh, there's no limit on the amount of contribution to the state or state uh, scholarship organizations. How many? How many? Uh, uh, how can we build a state budget under a plan like this? 
We'll look at creating a wide open door for individuals and, oper and, and corporations to credit their entire state income liability. Their, their income tax, the, the, what they pay is income tax. They can credit it all. This could, this could, the, how, how, are we going to, how are we going to create a budget year after year when we got this in our, in our face? I, I actually went to the Milwaukee schools. Uh, Governor Sanford and I were elected the same year in 2002. And uh, Doug Smith, who you knew then, was the original plant guy who put the put parents in charge bill in. That they knowing that I was a teacher wanted me to go and wanted me to see what was going on in Milwaukee. So we all flew to 10 or 12, I think Mr. Battle, Mr. Battle not here either. We all went up there to see what was going on, and I was amazed. I mean, I had a ball. It was amazing to see the excitement of the, of the kids, the engagement of that. But I tell you what, we went to the Spartanburg Charter School the other week, I think uh, Rita did, and the late chairman went not long before we started session this time. And boy, it was fun to watch those kids engaged. And guess what? It was public. And it was a choice. They had a choice. There's choices if you want. The choice is there instead of bankrupting our daggum state. It's like we said today. Somebody said today, we don't know what the outcome of this is going to be at the end. But we, we're going to do this because we're, we have so much invested in all these high price, and I ain't going to look back at them because I know they hate me, all these high price no lobbyists no and an agenda <laughs> that you have set up in the Republican Party that you said that we have dumbed down our schools and it's an attack on our teachers in this state. And I mean it's an attack, and the teachers in this state will tell you that. Especially, they're going to hear it from now on, especially after some, some, some of your party tried to get me beaten last time. And now I'm going to get mad and come back, and I'm going to make sure that they hear it, as everybody else. If this is what's going to happen, because I will guarantee you, you can go anywhere in your district right now, and 68 to 85 percent, depending on where you live, in rural areas or in suburban areas, 65 to 80 percent are huge supporters of public schools. Huge supporters of public schools. 700,000 of our children are being educated right now in the public schools. And what are we doing? 65,000 in private. We got about 10 or 12 in, in the chart. And we paid attention to the chart. I have no problem. You, you threw my amendment out right there because you're not willing to look at truly giving those who need assistance. I said, let's get them out of failing schools. Let's get them out if, if they and, uh, and live in poverty. We know that poverty level, that's another reason our schools are bad, guys. We're not, we're not willing to address the, pro the real problems. We think we're going to find another scam that we can throw out there and say, okay, this is solved. Uh, that 10 minutes? 10 minutes. I can't believe it, Chairman. I, you know, I asked for another. We got three three different timers and they all went off at the same time. So. Yeah, I heard that game. I heard that game. <laughs> no, it's actually tiger. I, <laughs> I, I, I think it's a farce and I guess I'm saying. All right. I'll have a check on the floor. Mr. Lawless, recognize. Are you speaking Thank for or again? I am speaking for the bill. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I've had a three years experience assisting my daughter with a grandchild in middle school, Mr. Anthony. There's no doubt in my mind that he was done now. There's no escape. There's a kid for I can't afford to do it. Ms. Allison, your point about transferring from one district to another, I'd support that. It should have been done. But the resistance to change the tax structure, you're right on that too. But there's also a resistance to change within the public school system. Every time, and, and, and the reason I think that legislators are meddling, if you want to call it that, Mr. Anthony, in this is because there is such resistance to change within the educational establishment. In the, in the early 1980s, I became part of the Business Education Partnership in Greenville. And the reason I did it, because I was hiring some um, part-time summer help from supposedly young ladies from, from the better, higher, higher academic performance 
uh, uh, numbers in the, in the school. They couldn't write an, a, 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 a legible or at least an intelligent memo. They couldn't spell well. And I saw these deficiencies, so I got involved. And I volunteered for about 10, 12 years. Went on the school board. We had reading recovery teachers, 92 at the time, that asked the question, okay, we have reading recovery teachers to help these students. What are we doing in the K-5 or first grade? What are we doing in the first grade to improve reading? Nothing. Changed nothing. We just went on and did the same old, same old thing. And my position is, you know, whatever you want to do in education, and there's always resistance there. I've listened to parents. I've experienced it myself. What's the problem? It's always the parents. It's not always the parents. It's not always the teacher. It's not always the school. I have had an experience with my, both my children and grandchildren in public schools, and not to, to a degree in private schools. There is no one answer. There was a problem with the, with the grandchild, and the academic arena was very fine in the, in the private school. But when some deficiencies were, were found, there was no help there. And he went to public school. And there was help. There was a remedy there. And I appreciate that. The elementary school that my children and my grandchildren attend, excellent, excellent school. The middle school is the pits. It was then, it is now. And, and when you're locked into a system, there needs to be a way out. You know, if, if 10 to 12 percent of children leave the public sector, uh, that's not going to kill the public sector. It will not kill it. I am for educated public in South Carolina. How we do it doesn't matter to me. I'm not for, this, for saving a, a, a sinking ship, and all of them aren't sinking, but there's certain areas that we just, Ms. Allison, we refuse to address it, just as the tax issue. We won't correct it. And, and, and therein lies a, a big part of the problem. Uh, as far as charter schools, I am for charter schools. And, and um, it is a public school. We need, to, we need to have more of those. In Greenville, there's a charter school in a low socioeconomic area. And those two students are performing very, very well. You'd be proud of them. Uh, but they have all the disadvantages. Income, single parent homes, all of that. So it's not just the home, not just the environment, it's a combination of a lot of things in the wilderness. A big difference is the principal and leadership in the school and at the school district. And when you are not getting, when we're having such failures across our state in different arenas, we have successes, but we have failures in the public system. And we are, we are refusing to address those then we need to do something to try to move it and motivate people to address those. Um, charter schools. Uh, didn't ask for enough funding. Well, we asked for funding just to, and we had resistance there to even get a charter, public school. Resistance, resistance. So we took what funding that we could get. And now we said, well, you didn't ask for enough. Well, we, we took what we could get to, to, to get the door open. And there's, a, there's success there and continuing success there. And, and I'm for more public charter schools. We need a public charter school for engineering or a governor's school in this state. But we've got to make some changes. Everybody's not going to be happy. But I've reached my tipping point, really. Uh, being involved in education since the 80s, and we're still dealing with the same problems, the same resistance, and the same uh, problems with reading and math and those skills that we were dealing with in the 1980s, and nothing's changed. Something has got to change. Uh, and, and we've got an amendment on this bill with a five-year sunset. That'll give us time to look at it and to see what, what uh, advances we can make. And I think we're gonna see some success. Um, are they private schools that fail or not good? Well, that's a parent's choice, if they are. But if they're not good, they'll close. Not the case with the public facility. And, and, and there lies the problem. We resist any restrictions or any requirements that, that says that, that 
your school has got to perform. There's no, there's no consequences. So that's, that's some of the reasons that I'm in favor of this. 